we will evaluate the given expressions using the reference triangles shown here below. The first expression is cosine of inverse sine of one half. Inverse sine of one half is equal to the angle on the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two that has a sine function value of one half. Having a sine function value of one half should remind us of the 30, 60, 90 reference triangle since sine theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, notice the sine of three degrees or the sine of pi over six radians is equal to one divided by two or one half and therefore inverse sine of one half in radians is equal to pi over six radians or one sixth pi radians. And therefore this simplifies to cosine of pi over six or cosine of one sixth pi radians and since cosine theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, the cosine of one sixth pi radians is equal to square root three divided by two. Next we have sine of inverse tangent of one. Inverse tangent of one is equal to the angle on the open interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two that has a tangent function value of positive one. Having a tangent function value of positive one should remind us of the 45, 45, 90 reference triangle since tangent theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. Notice how the tangent of 45 degrees or the tangent of pi over four or one fourth pi radians is equal to one divided by one, which is equal to one, which means inverse tangent of one is equal to 45 degrees or radians pi over four or one fourth pi radians and the expression simplifies to the sine of one-fourth pi radians. And now using the angle again, the sine function value is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, which gives us one divided by square root two. But you may be asked to rationalize the denominator, so let's also show that work. To rationalize the denominator, we multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of two, which gives us square root two divided by two. Now for these next two expressions, notice how the inputs into the inverse trig functions are negative, and therefore we will have to sketch the reference triangles on the coordinate plane based upon the output or range of the inverse trig function. So here we have tangent of inverse cosine of negative square root three divided by two Inverse cosine of negative square root three divided by two is equal to the angle in the closed interval from zero to pi radians that has a cosine function value of negative square root three divided by two. And since the output of inverse cosine is the closed interval from zero to pi radians, the angle will be in the first or second quadrant. And since the cosine function value is negative, the angle will be in the second quadrant. And now if we ignore this sign here for a moment, Having a cosine function value of square root three divided by two should remind us of the 30, 60, 90 reference triangle. Where notice the cosine of 30 degrees or pi over six radians is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which gives us positive square root three divided by two. But we are looking for the angle that has a cosine function value of negative square root three divided by two. So we are not looking for the angle of 30 degrees or pi over six radians but this is the reference angle that we need to sketch in the second quadrant where we know cosine is negative. This will help us find the angle in the interval from zero to pi radians that has this negative cosine function value. So this is the terminal side of the angle we are looking for. Where the reference angle, this angle here is three degrees or pi divided by six radians. Let's go ahead and sketch the reference triangle. Because we are in the second quadrant where x is negative and y is positive, the opposite side is positive one, the hypotenuse is two, and this leg here is negative square root three. Notice how this reference triangle does give a cosine function value of negative square root three divided by two, and therefore the angle we are looking for has its initial side along the positive x-axis, terminal side along this ray, rotating counterclockwise, the angle is 150 degrees, or 5 sixth pi radians, which we can find by taking 180 degrees and subtracting the reference angle, or in radians, taking pi radians and subtracting pi over six, or 1 sixth pi radians, which gives us 5 sixth pi radians. 
So this is equal to the tangent of 5 6 pi radians. Using the reference triangle, the tangent function value is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side, which gives us 1 divided by negative square root of 3, or just negative 1 over square root of 3. Let's also rationalize the denominator, just in case you are required to do this. We multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 3, which gives us negative square root of 3 divided by 3. Again, there's no need to rationalize the denominator unless you are required to do so. For the last expression, we have cosine of inverse tangent of negative square root 3. Inverse tangent of negative square root 3 returns an angle in the open interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 that has a tangent function value of negative square root 3. And since the output of inverse tangent is on the open interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, the angle will be either in the first quadrant, where tangent is positive, or the fourth quadrant, where tangent is negative. And since we have a negative tangent function value, the angle will be in the fourth quadrant. Ignoring the sign for a moment, notice the tangent of 60 degrees, or pi divided by the three radians, is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side, which gives us positive square root of three divided by one, which is equal to positive square root of three. Since we are looking for the angle that has a tangent function value of negative square root of three, the angle we are looking for is not 60 degrees or pi over three radians. This is the reference angle we need to sketch in the fourth quadrant to find the angle that has this negative tangent function value. So we sketch a reference angle of 60 degrees in the fourth quadrant, which means this is the terminal side of the angle we are looking for, where the reference angle, this angle here, is 60 degrees or pi divided by three radians. Let's sketch the reference triangle. In the fourth quadrant, x is positive and y is negative, which means the short leg is one, the hypotenuse is two, and this leg is negative square root of three. Notice how this reference triangle does give a tangent function value of negative square root of three divided by one, which is negative square root of three. In order for the angle to be in the open interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, the initial side is along the positive x-axis, the terminal side is here, and we have to rotate clockwise, and therefore the angle is negative 60 degrees, or in radians, negative pi over three, or negative one-third pi radians. The expression is equal to the cosine of negative one-third pi radians. Using the reference triangle, cosine negative one-third pi radians is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which is one divided by two or one-half. I hope you found this helpful.